I have a theory regarding a new Demon Slayer game. Cyber Connect 2 together with Aniplex made Hinokami Chronicles, and from what I know, the game was relatively successful. And so it makes sense that they're making Hinokami Chronicles 2, the sequel to the Arena Fighter, but in the meantime, they needed something else. They needed a game that was maybe easier to develop, something to give them the time they need to properly develop the sequel. Back in the day, CC2 had to put out a new Naruto game every year, and a lot of those ended up being very rushed. That's why Storm games, they have significant changes from one game to the next, but also a lot of features end up getting cut. Well, they gave them more time for connections and... Look what they did. Sure, time isn't everything, but it sure helps. And for Demon Slayer, I believe that Sweep the Board, the upcoming board game for Nintendo Switch, is that perfect buffer game they need, because it not only gives them time to develop Hinokami Chronicles 2, they can also create assets for this game that they can then reuse for Hinokami Chronicles. In past trailers, we have seen new Hashira that I do believe will be playable in the sequel, and today they just announced the Swordsmith Village will be coming to Sweep the Board. Now, I'm not sure which boards I expected them to add at the end of the day, I didn't really think about it, much, but announcing this board is important because in Sweep the Board, most minigames seem to be board specific and there are boss events that will only happen in certain boards. And so even though we had new Hashira playable, we hadn't seen the new Season 3 Demons, at least not yet. I believe that whatever they show here is a big hint as what they're including in Hinokami Chronicles 2. So not only is this trailer great for people like me who want to play Sweep the Board, but also for those looking forward to the Arena Fighter, here's a taste of what you might expect. But that's just a theory. I'm not gonna do it. Oh yeah, uh, Japanese trailer only. Uh, we we don't have an English version yet. There's the board. Oh, that's a nice overview. Let's pause it right there. We don't always get an overview this nice. This is cool. All right, so the starting point is down there at the bottom right. From here, you have to go up, but then you can choose to go right, and that just kind of loops around, or you can go left and start the actual trajectory. You go through town and you make it to, I believe that's the train dummy area. At least it looks like it from a distance. And you can also loop around this zone if you want, or you can decide to move forward to the hot springs. Once you get to the hot springs, you can also loop around. I'm starting to sense the theme with this board. You can just loop around wherever you want. And after you leave, this is interesting, you can take a short path back to the start, or you can take a long way around through the mountains to get essentially to the same spot. Now, I don't think this board has any crazy gimmicks like the Mugen train seems to have, where you actually have to board the train to access certain parts of the board. I guess the most gimmicky thing here is that you can just loop around the same place. But maybe there's something else we're not seeing quite yet, so let's keep the trailer going. Okay, okay, okay. We're just moving. Aha, uh -huh, of course. Of course, we got the uh, the swordsmiths. Ooh. Okay, no, we had seen the puppet, but I did not expect a full-on boss fight. I guess you can call this a, a boss fight, but they did make the model. It's there. The model is made in 3D. Does this mean that this puppet is gonna end up in Hinokami Chronicles 2? I would say, actually, yeah, probably. Not saying he's gonna be a playable character, although... That wouldn't be terrible. But if you're playing story mode, I can definitely see him being some sort of a quick time event that you have to beat. Or maybe even a unique story mode boss fight. That'd be cool. But that's the first big surprise for me. That's why I think these trailers are important. Not only for Sweep the Board, but also for Hinokami Chronicles 2. Okay, we got some mini games. I think we're picking... Oh, only the mask with the thick eyebrows. All right, okay. Uh, this seems to be just a quick time event. You just uh, hit the buttons to send the, the dishes over. And, uh, yeah, she's, she's gonna eat all of them. Seems to be a team event. So let's go nighttime. Ooh, Gyoko final form. Okay, interesting. So with Gyoko, we did have some different possibilities, right? He starts in the vase, but making an arena character that is in the vase, it's kind of hard to move around. Maybe not the easiest thing to design, so I understand if they just go straight to final form. Personally, I would love to see them figure out the vase part and have final form be kind of an in-game transformation. But at the very least, I think this is a big hint that Gyoko final form will be a playable character in the next arena fighter. Dude, dude, what is this cutscene? Whoa, 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 If you didn't believe that they were building assets for Hinokami Chronicles 2, what is this animation, dude? That's straight out of Hinokami Chronicles. They didn't need to go that hard. Not for the board game. This is them building the resources and the assets for the next Arena Fighter. 100%, this is like a Surge animation. I wouldn't be surprised if it's exactly this, one to one. You go into Surge and you do this beautiful animation. Boom, ready, go back into battle. Dude, that's, a, that's totally what it is. It's totally what it is. I don't think we had seen that level of animation in this game yet. Now this, this, yeah, this is unique to sweep the board. But these cutscenes, 
that's a part of his ultimate. It's gotta be. That's a part of the Mist Hashira ultimate. It's a very small part, but I, I do think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're also getting this guy. Now, I, I do wonder how they're gonna make him playable. Look at this! You're not gonna tell me they made this for the board game. You're not. That's that's Arena Fighter Resources, man. They're building, they're so smart. They're already making the, the sequel while working on this game. That that's that's really clever. Now I don't know how they're gonna make him playable. That, that's another beautiful animation. That's a part of our ultimate for sure. Okay, that's it. But as I was saying, I, I'm not really sure how they're gonna make Zohaktin here playable. Because he really does just stand still and hit the drums and let the trees attack for him. That seems a bit boring. He's uh, kind of a waste of a good design, I feel. Because the fighting style isn't the best. So I wonder how they're gonna make him playable. If they do make him playable at all, there's still a chance that he might just be a boss fight in story mode. But if I had to guess, man, this close up and him hitting the drums like that, he's gonna summon all these trees and then the animation is going to continue as the trees attack you. I, I think that's like an ultimate animation. And then we have Mitsuri for the final shot, which must also be part of her ultimate animation in Hinokami Chronicles 2. It's so obvious, right? Because the whole game has kind of a look and a vibe. And then when it goes into cutscene, it's like, oh, Oh, that's the arena fighter. Now look, I don't think any of these characters come as a surprise. I think they are obvious picks if a sequel is getting made, which I think this is a very big hint that a sequel is indeed getting made. But it's not about seeing the character reveals. It's about seeing that they're actually doing the work and which versions of the characters they're picking. That's an incredible trailer. The game comes out next month, so we won't have to wait long to play it. And unlike many fans out there, I really actually want to play this game. I'm not just looking at the trailers to figure out what they're doing for Hinokami Chronicles 2. This is a game I'm excited about. So on that end of things, this was also an awesome trailer for me. But that's gonna do it for today. And this trailer was very eye-opening, because I wasn't looking at these trailers as like hints as what they're doing for Hinokami Chronicles 2. And so it might be worth checking out the previous trailers again with that in mind. Here's my latest video on Sweep the Board, and thank you so much for watching. Bye.